Hey guys, good morning. So I'm working on the P48 uh, today, the uh, 1948 Chevy 3100 that we're putting together for a good uh, client of mine. Um, and I'm going to be building a battery tray uh, today that's going to mount back on the frame, very similar to the original one that came out. Um, it's going to hold a full-size battery. The battery tray that I took out of the 48 was a 6-volt battery tray, and uh, the 12 volt battery wouldn't fit so somebody had taken an oxyacetylene torch to it and cut the back side of the tray out which served the purpose I suppose but um, there was nothing really holding the battery in there so it could have could have easily fallen out of the truck um, so I'm going to build a proper battery tray that closes in all four sides and the bottom of the battery and holds it in place so it can't just fall out of the battery tray and we'll make a battery hold down on top as well with some uh, J hooks or bolts that'll that'll hold uh, hold the battery securely, so that I can continue on with the wiring portion of this project. Um, another thing I wanted to mention is one of the in one of the earlier videos you guys saw me drop the drop the shifter through the uh, through the tunnel in the floor and and broke the shifter handle which or shifter knob off of it which kind of bothered me a little bit because I know that was probably a really old piece and just uh, I hate breaking old parts but uh, a solution came to me today while I was looking for uh, a cool shift knob to replace it or something I could fab up into a shift knob you know this is going to be kind of a rat rod truck so it's, I, I was looking for uh, something I could throw on the end of the handle there and um, I think I found the perfect solution uh, I don't know if my Customers gonna feel the same way about it or not, but I think for now uh, it satisfies me anyway. So here's the shifter, and uh, what I ended up using is the old manual starter foot pedal uh, foot pedal top that was on the uh, on the manual starter. You know, on these old 48s, you had a you had a lever that you operated with your foot that contacted the starter solenoid on the motor and that's what fired over the the starter to start the truck we're not using that of course in our TBI 350 so um, I've removed all those pedals and I thought I, I thought I wonder if that uh, knurled foot pedal would uh, would thread onto the shifter threads and sure enough it's exactly the right size and I think it looks great feels good in the hand and it's uh, I think it's a good solution. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how the owner feels about that. But for now, I'm leaving it on there. He can he can swap out something more to his taste if uh, if this doesn't uh, doesn't work for him. So what I'm going to do today is take uh, this shifter and adapt it to our NV3550 slash T5, whatever you want to call it, five-speed transmission shifter. Um, I've got to cut the old shifter off of there and save as much of the metal shift rod inside of it as possible so that I can then adapt this shifter onto it and the uh, the owner of the truck wants kind of a tall shifter so I'm not going to put it up through the windshield but uh, it'll be pretty tall up in there and uh, I think I think he's going to be happy with this so I'm going to get to work on that stuff and get some video of uh, building the battery tray and modifying the shifter I'm going to be TIG welding that uh, I'm going to MIG the battery tray because no one's going to see it anyway. It doesn't need to be pretty. Uh, but uh, the shifter, I want to TIG it so it looks, looks nice. And uh, we'll see how that goes.
So you guys saw me TIG weld the old shifter onto the new shifter. Um, and I put it all back together here. I'm going to throw it in the truck and see how everything fits. Um, due to the fact that I haven't set the steering column height yet, uh, I may end up having to heat this up with the oxyacetylene and bend it a little bit to clear the steering wheel. I'm not, not quite sure at this point, but I'm going to test fit it and see. But uh, it came out pretty decent for a guy who's not a very good TIG welder. Um, you know, what I like about the TIG process is that you control how much filler you add and the heat, you know, obviously as well. So I made one root pass, uh, got it in, got a good deep root pass in there and lots of heat. And then I just built up a couple passes over the top of that and tried to fill it in as, and level it out as best I could. Um, the shafts were slightly different size, so it's offset a little bit, but... Um, there's a boot here that covers it, so, you know, with the boot on, looks like it was always that way. So, I'm going to throw it in and see uh, see how it fits. And this one is, I'm going to call it a draw. You know, I told you guys I would post all the wins, the losses, and the draws. <clears throat> when I welded it here to the new uh, T5 shifter housing, um, I welded it in the same exact position as the S10 shifter that would have come out of this transmission. Um, and that's not going to work for us. It's, uh, it's going to interfere with the steering wheel. Uh, the steering wheel is going to move down. It's probably going to be around here in this location. Uh, but that shifter is just going to be too close. So I'm going to have to revisit the shifter. And I'll get the oxyacetylene torch out, and I'll probably decrease the radius of this bend to bring the shifter up a little bit. And I will rotate it as well when I heat it and bring it a little further out towards the passenger side. And that will alleviate our clearance problem. built the battery tray specifically for the battery that should have been in the 94 donor truck which is a group 78 size battery and the battery that came out of it I'm not sure what that was but it was much bigger and uh, I built my battery tray with dimensions for a group 78 size battery and I went to drop the battery in it and realized oh crap this thing's way too big to fit in my tray which isn't uh, isn't a big deal because when the, uh, when the owner of the 48 here, the P48 project, um, 1948 Chevy 3100, when he brought the donor truck over here to have me pull the motor out of it, uh, it took him a few hours to get it started because the battery was dead as a door now. So I think that battery is no good anyway. So what I did here is I built my bulletproof uh, battery tray based on the specifications for a Group 78 battery, and then I went and picked up a, a brand new Group 78 battery, and it fits the tray just fine. So, here's what I've got. So here's my monster battery tray with the battery in it. Fits, fits really good. Here's the old uh, battery tray in comparison to uh, what I cobbled together here. 
So as you can see, this is this is the area that they took the torch to and cut the whole back of this battery tray out. And in fact, when I was beating the uh, rivets out of it, it uh, started cracking and just snapped off. I think this battery tray was pretty much done. And here's the uh, battery tray installed in its spot. I'm planning to use all stainless uh, cap screws throughout the truck. So that's how she sits. So I dropped the battery in here just so we could see how it fits. You can see it's pretty tight. Um, I'd like to be able to move it forward. If I could move it forward an inch, it would drop right in there. But uh, unfortunately, we have the uh, front running board support in that location. So I've got plenty of clearance for all my side post cables that are going to run up the frame and uh, lots of room in there for that. Fits good, looks good. Uh, the little go on no problem. So everything's good with that. Maybe I uh, grind out two of those rivets on that front running board support and slide my battery bracket under there so I can get that extra inch forward uh, that'll make the battery drop right in place. Anyway, uh, so it's in there. I can wire up my battery cables. I ordered all my uh, 2 uh cable, 2 and 4, that I'm going to uh, solder ends on for battery cables and uh, ground straps and all that so all that's on the way I should have that here by the weekend and uh, uh, be able to get all of those hard lines fabbed up so that's pretty much where I'm at today guys uh, I know not a lot of progress today I meant to get the battery tray built yesterday but um, didn't happen and uh, I had a bunch of work for my primary job that I had to do this morning so I was able to get the battery tray built today, but, um, but that's pretty much going to wrap it up for today. So thanks for watching. If you guys like this kind of stuff, uh, please click like and subscribe.